to understand the second law of thermodynamics, you have to know what thermodynamic cycle is. Well, it is a sequence of process that begins and ends at same state. Here, the properties of the system are same after the cycle, as they were prior. And, for a closed system undergoing a cycle, change in internal energy is always zero. And according to energy conservation or the first law, the heat transfit to the system, during the cycle process, must equal work done by the same system. Therefore, first law says that for cyclic process, every heat given must be converted to work. But every heat energy cannot be converted to work, that is impossible. Because without rejecting heat to colder body, this device cannot complete the cycle, and it will stuck. In order to complete the cycle, it must reject heat. If somehow it was able to operate on cycle, without rejecting any heat then every heat is converted to work. There is no heat loss and it violates second law. This types of device is called a perpetual motion machine. It do not exist in real life. The Calvin Planck statement of second law tells us about the same thing about this thermodynamic cycle. It says that it is impossible for any device that operates on a cycle to receive heat from a single reservoir and provide net amount of work. This device is operating on cycle receiving heat from single reservoir and producing the net amount of work. So if 100 kilojoules of heat is received, then 100 kilojoules of work is done during cycle. It has thermal efficiency of 100%. But our statement of second law tells us that it must reject heat in order to operate on cycle, so the gas Inside the cylinder must exchange heat with the cold environment, as well as the heat source. And it can never achieve 100% thermal efficiency. And also it is true even under idealized condition. This device won't get 100% efficiency even if you assume an ideal gas as a working fluid and a frictionless piston. That's what second law says. The impossibility of having a 100% efficient heat engine is not due to friction or other dissipative effects. It is a limitation that applies to both the idealized and the actual heat engines. Now, let us try to conserve this waste heat for later use. If it is conserved, then we don't need sink or condenser to reject heat. And every heat given is converted to work for any cyclic process. Let us consider a simple heat engine that is used to lift weight. A heat engine is a device that converts heat to work and it operates on cycle. Assume the working fluid inside this heat engine as an ideal one. Initially the gas temperature is 30 degrees Celsius. The piston which is loaded with the weights is resting on top of the lower stops. Now, 100 kilojoules of heat is given to this gas from the source at 100 degrees Celsius causing it to expand and to raise the loaded piston until the piston raises the upper stops. At this point our heat engine is in state 2. Here the load is removed 
and the gas temperature is observed to be 90 degrees Celsius. The work done on the load during this expansion is equal to the increase in its potential energy, say 40 kilojoules. Look, even under ideal condition, the amount of heat supplied to the gas is greater than work done. Now, it raised the questions about what happened to other 60 kilojoules of energy. According to first law, energy conservation, this extra energy is used to increase the change in internal energy of gas, which is, change of energy from state 1 to state 2. But you know, for an ideal gas, internal energy is function of temperature only. Do you know what this mean? It means that some part of heat energy is used to raise the temperature of gas. In this case 60 kilojoules of heat energy is used to raise the temperature. Also remember only half the cycle is complete here, so change in internal energy from state 1 to state 2 is not zero. It sucks some of heat energy to raise the temperature of gas. So, with 100 kilojoules of heat given, only 40 kilojoules is used to do work, and remaining 60 kilojoules of energy is used to increase the temperature of gas. Now, let us try to answer this question. Is it possible to transfer the 60 kilojoules of excess heat at 90 degrees Celsius? back to the reservoir at 100 degrees Celsius for later use? I mean cooling this gas from 90 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius by conserving the 60 kilojoules of heat and returning to initial state and complete the cycle. Well, this question can be solved. But we need both first and second law for this. You know, in cyclic process, change in internal energy is zero, and according to first law only, every heat must be converted to work. But according to second law, that is impossible. Some energy must be rejected to colder body, in order to operate on cycle. So if you follow second law you can't conserve this energy. This waste heat must be rejected to colder body. And on cyclic process, this heat engine has thermal efficiency of 40%. But, if you do not follow second law, and follow first law only, then you can conserve this excess heat. Because first law is still valid, if you assume that, Heat can reverse its direction, and can travel from lower temperature to higher temperature, and complete the cycle. So, if this gas is cooled back to initial state, by transferring heat back to hotter body, then, zero heat is projected to environment or colder body. Now there is zero waste energy, the thermal efficiency would be 100%. Which means, every heat given is utilized to do work. So, what you see here, is first law only talks about energy balance and its conservation. It was valid on both cases, when he travels from hotter body to colder body and vice versa. And do not tell anything about heat direction. Right now, we only talked about cyclic process. For non-cyclic process, second law is still applied. And for that, you need the concept of entropy, 
which can be defined on any process that occurs in nature. More about entropy later. But for now, just remember, a process must satisfy both the first and second laws to proceed.